Hey, hello everyone, this is Genuine Polish, and in this video, we're going to be covering the most basic basics about rockets. And the reason for this video is I was talking to a friend about Auction Not Included, and they told me that they'd never built a rocket for as long as they played, which blows my mind because they had the spaced out DLC, which I thought isn't the whole point of spaced out rocket exploration, but I guess it does add a couple new features, but still, that blew my mind when I heard that. So I was like, okay, I need to make a video, if for no one else, just for my friend, about the most basic introduction to rockets so that they can get to their third planet. Okay, so getting into the basics of rocket construction. First off, you need a rocket platform. You can't build a rocket without a rocket platform. You can build more than one rocket using a single platform, but because a rocket needs a platform to land, unless if you're abandoning rockets up in space, you're pretty much going to need one platform per rocket. So when you click on the building, it'll have this button, New Rocket. When you click on that, it'll give you an option of all the modules you can build. You'll want to start with an engine. So when you hover over a rocket engine, it'll give you a couple of different statistics, height, burden, potential range, engine power, and speed. But because rockets kind of follow a single progression, there's not really going to be a situation where you're choosing between a rocket that has better range or better speed. For the most part, it's the next rocket is the better rocket, period. So pretty much what you're choosing is how far do I need to go and what kind of fuel am I willing to use? For the most part, the natural progression is going to be something like carbon dioxide, steam engine, petroleum if you can afford it. Most people would opt for the Radbolt engine if you if you can work out how to fuel it, which I'll cover in another video. And then the last rocket, which is by far the best, is the hydrogen engine, which overshadows all the other engines. But because of all the complexities needed to fuel the hydrogen engine, I personally stop at the Radbolt engine. But if rocket building is new to you, this is probably your first rocket and you're probably using it to get to your third asteroid. So I would recommend using the carbon dioxide engine. Next up, you're going to have to ask yourself, do I want to abandon this rocket in the atmosphere of the next planet? Or do I want to send someone down to the surface and come back? You probably want to send someone down to the surface. So what you can do is select the Trailblazer module. From there, you need two modules. You need a nose cone and a spacefare module. Fortunately for us, there's a solo spacefare nose cone. This rocket would not be able to get off the ground with the spacefare module and the nose cone. It's just too high. So you can select the solo spacefare nose cone. And then at this point, you can either just leave it be or you can add a battery module. So that way you can supply power on the ground and give your duplicants some power reserves while they're up in space. Now it is important to know with the spacefare module, even though it does already take 200 kilograms of refined metal to make, it takes another 400 kilograms to build the actual drop pod that the duplicants will go down in. So this module is reusable, you just have to resupply the drop pod. So inside the interior of the small spacefare module, you have 26 tiles of space. A lot of these tiles are not very accessible because of the layout of the room. And you'll notice this building right in the center of the room, the rocket control station. The cool thing about the rocket control station is you can just deconstruct it and rebuild it in another location in the room to make better use of the space. So there, you might notice that there's some weird tiles in the spacefarer module. These tiles here correspond to liquid and gas inputs and outputs to the spacefarer module. So you can see this is an input port for gas, and this is the output port for gas. Now if you go to the exterior of the rocket and look at the ventilation overview, you can see that there's an input and an output. This is an easy way for you to pipe gases into your spacefarer module so that way you can give your duplicates oxygen or whatever gases they might need. So if you go into the interior of your rocket and click on rocketry, you'll see all these power outlet fittings, liquid intake fittings, liquid output fittings, and, and so on. These are connections to your other modules. So this power outlet fitting connects directly to your battery module. And your battery module can be powered by connecting a wire to the battery module. And you can see it has a thousand kilojoules of power, so that's two and a half batteries. That's two and a half large batteries. The cool thing about the battery module is it works as an unlimited transformer where you don't have to worry about power being drawn from the interior of the spacefare module while it's on the ground. So from there, you can connect any kind of building to your battery module, and it will be powered by your battery module. So with this limited amount of space, you're going to need to be able to travel a couple days round trip if you're going to the nearby planetoid. The carbon dioxide rocket takes about one cycle to cover one tile. So now you have to look at how are you going to configure the interior in order to get there. Well, I have a good example here of one way you could do it. So in this construction, I have a telescope because telescopes can be used inside rockets, and so that way they can discover tiles that are outside of the range of our home planetoid while they're traveling. It gives them something to do. Next, we have a refrigerator, because food only lasts so long. If you make an effort, you can remove foods that don't expire from people's diet and then stock them on rocket ships so you don't have to worry about refrigerators if you prefer to do that and if you have access to do that. And then you may want a bed for your pilot. It's optional. 
duplicants and can survive without beds but they can't survive without food. So make sure that you give them some source of food. And what you can do also is you can build a refrigerator, stock it, then deconstruct it so that way you have food inside the spacefare module. When supplying the rocket, the simplest way to do it for this for your first rocket is gonna be just having a storage bin, filling it with resources, and then deconstructing it. Once you've collected resources in here, you can build a ladder to access the upper area. And once you've taken off, if you decided to have the telescope, you can destroy the rocket control station and put some form of oxygen production in its place or what you can do is you can pressurize the cabin with oxygen make sure all all the duplicates in the space fair module have atmos suits on and when they run out of oxygen in their atmos suits they'll recover breath and they won't consume any amount of oxygen while recovering breath that way you can remove the need for an oxygen source in this first rocket and then, like i mentioned before you, you can connect the gas supply to the gas space fair output port and pipe oxygen into the input port of the space fair module and with all that, you're ready to take off. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to first want to select your location. You can see in this menu, it'll tell you the trip distance, how far it is out of your maximum range, one out of six. So we have enough fuel to get to this tile and back. The space for module is complete, and that's why it's not, no longer a white outline in here. And once you're ready, you can hit crew, change crew, if you want to select multiple duplicates. And when you hit crew, they will immediately load into the rocket. From there, it's going to give you a launch checklist. You need to make sure that all of these boxes are filled and that there is no red boxes left unchecked. You can see a clear launch path. And that's because I built this rocket with bunker doors on top for a very important reason. Let's open up these bunker doors. All right. And now that the bunker doors are open, you can see that the launch path is clear and I can begin launch sequence. It doesn't take very long for the rocket to launch off. And as soon as it has started to launch, you can close your bunker doors. Now your duplicates will be in space. Important things to note is you can deconstruct the rocket control station and then you can build another building in its place. So if you want to give your duplicates a bed for the duration of the flight, you can. So let's say you've arrived at your destination. You want to deploy a duplicate to the surface. You will go back to the star map, click on the rocket and click on the trailblazer module. From there, you can select the duplicate. Make sure not to select the pilot. So once you've selected your duplicate, you can hit deploy. From there, it'll let you choose the starting location and this might be limited by how much of the planet you have built. And when you click on that, it'll deploy pretty much instantly and the duplicate will arrive at the planet. It's important to note that the trailblazer module can be deconstructed and you can recover that refined metal if you so desire. Now that you've done your mission, you can send your rocket back to its home platform or to a new platform if you've constructed it on a different planet. Or let's say that you didn't have a trailblazer module and you were just sending a rocket on a one-way trip to the next planet with a couple of duplicates. Or your spaceship has run out of fuel or your duplicate is nearly about to die. What you can do is hit abandon ship. And that'll deploy a bunch of resources to the nearest planetoid. And the duplicate will arrive unharmed on the surface of the planet. You can see that there's, there'll be piles of debris that can be collected to salvage some of the resources. So let's say you just successfully deployed the Trailblazer module and you're back on your home planet with your original rocket. The cool thing about carbon dioxide rockets and the reason why I suggest them for your first early space exploration is that they don't cost any fuel once you've supplied them. And here's why. If you build the rocket sufficiently below the surface, the rocket will exhaust carbon dioxide at a set amount per tile that it passes. What that means is the longer distance it travels on your planet, the more carbon dioxide it'll offput. And you can see here, this one pump pumping this cavity, we've already collected 14 kilograms times 35 tiles, so almost 500 kilograms of carbon dioxide. And this little rocket only has the capacity for 100 kilograms. So we've almost gotten five times the quantity that we put in there just from this rocket taking off and landing again, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, it gives you an unlimited source of carbon dioxide to use for rocket fuel. But besides just being able to refuel the rocket, you now have all this carbon dioxide at your disposal for whatever kind of uses you might have for it. An important thing with rockets is that even this small rocket puts off a reasonable amount of heat. So you're going to want some kind of heat sink because the carbon dioxide rocket is such a small rocket. It really, you can really just put a pool of very chilled water beneath it. It'll probably keep the temperature of the environment relatively safe until you're ready to upgrade to a new rocket. All right, everyone, that's the basic introduction to rockets. This setup will get you to your, your third planetoid get you to the surface and back safely. And this setup will get you unlimited fuel so that way you can keep going to the edge of your explored solar system and using your telescope while you're there. So that way you actually have destinations to reach once you have the ability to build more advanced rockets. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe and uh, click on through to the next video whenever it pops out. Thanks guys.